Whooping cough, or pertussis, is an infection of the upper air passages occurring in epidemics. The characteristic changes in the lungs consist of ecchymoses of the pulmonary cortex, acute distension of the apices, emphysema, and distension of the bronchioles. The latter contain a thick, creamy pus, which at times finds its way into the alveoli. Dilatation and hypertrophy of the right heart is nearly always present due to increased pressure in the pulmonary circulation. The period of incubation lasts from 3 to 10 days and is symptomless. The initial cateral stage is marked by the symptoms of a febrile laryngotracheal bronchitis. Toward the end of the initial stage, the cateral symptoms gradually disappear, and the cough, which is at times loose and at other times dry, assumes a peculiar metallic tone. It occurs more frequently at night and becomes more spasmodic. In about two weeks after the commencement of the first symptoms of the disease, the attacks of cough develop less often, but are of a convulsive character, the convulsive stage. The convulsions are preceded by several seconds or a minute of an aura in the form of a tickling sensation or burning of the throat, a feeling of oppression, great restlessness, nausea, and tracheal rattling. The cough, which has been vainly held back, then breaks forth. Numerous expiratory coughs follow each other, interrupted now only then by a laborious sighing and crowing inspiration, which follows at times a short period of rest. This is continued until the main attack and two or three after attacks have forced out a tenacious plug of mucus, which frequently fails to occur until one to five minutes after a vomiting spell. During the attack, in which the child is frequently close to asphyxiation, the venous stasis causes the lips and eyelids to swell and the face to become red and finally cyanosed. The pulse is very rapid. In many cases, hemorrhages are noted from the nose and ear or into the conjunctivae and, in rarer cases, into the brain, accompanied by the symptoms of cerebral pressure and even death. Assuming they don't die, the child soon recovers after the attack and, in uncomplicated cases, feels perfectly well during the interval. Examination of the lungs is negative or discloses a few dry rawls. The duration of the interval is most variable. In mild cases, only about a dozen, and in severe cases, several dozen attacks occur within 24 hours. After the convulsive stage has lasted two or three and sometimes eight or ten weeks, the attacks begin to become less frequent and lessen in severity. The cough gradually loses its spasmodic nature and becomes looser, and the disease passes into the terminal stage. Relapse during convalescence because of neglect are quite frequent. The prognosis of pertussis in small, weakly, especially rachitic children is very dubious. Because of the frequency of severe complications, such as eclampsia, capillary bronchitis, bronchopneumonia, and sometimes purulent meningitis, Danger of asphyxiation during an attack is especially likely to threaten nurslings, for in them the seizures are less noisy and frequently the crowing inspiration is replaced by a sneezing sound, at times also in older children, and not rarely decided air hunger already exists before attention is attracted to the child's condition. A doubtful prognosis is always made in mixed infection, as in the occurrence of measles, scarlet fever, and diphtheria. It's from 1907 predating vaccination.